So we are seven months away from having visited the garden last and just got picked up by my friend Julio and we are on the way. We got the mail and the packages, some stuff for settling back in. But it, yeah, it's been seven months since our miniature food forest area has last been visited. No maintenance, no upkeep. Uh, the most we had was the neighbors going up to like pick some food. I don't know if they've done that lately. So we have no idea what's in store for us, um, what it's gonna look like. We're gonna be there in, I think it's like 20 minutes or so. Uh, so we'll catch you guys in the parking lot. Till then. All right, we just showed up. It's humid. We're gonna do a quick walk around and show things, and then uh, I'll probably explore it a little bit and then do some more details. But let's see, let's see what this looks like. You ready, Julio? Sure. All right. So the coconut palm's still here in the entranceway. It looks like our wonderful neighbors cut a path so we don't have to quite wade up through everything. Uh, we started filling in this trench with a uh, with stones and the lipstick palm, you can't see it on the video, but there's a lipstick palm down there that's still alive. We started doing a ribbon driveway and this first half of the ribbon is still, still standing. The frame is still here. And I planted air potatoes in this area, the edible versions that aren't nearly as aggressive. Ah, yes, there they are. I uh, hear they... a lot of rain coming our way. Okay, they are up, up in there. And yes, we hear rain coming, so we are going to go up to the overhang of the house. Oh, just got a spider web. There's a structure still here. We're gonna. Step here on this stoop, our sequestered area. Perfect timing. Yeah, literally. Looks like the passion fruit vine up on the wire died. Let's uh, let's let this rain pass. Oh. We'll, we'll pull this video back up. <laughs> All right, so the rain's dying down. And let's take a look at what we've got. We showed that. So from here, we see this giant Mexican sunflower. The dome structure is mostly buried behind it. We got some sugar cane coming up. We definitely see, and our neighbors had warned us about this, and I went ahead and bought a bee suit because of it. We have honeybees flying in and out of one of the gaps in the plaster. I'm actually surprised they're not coming out the door, but there's definitely a colony of wild honeybees that moved in. So I've, I've ordered a beehive that I'll be moving them into. Uh, the green belt where we worked on planting a fair bit of stuff. We've still got, uh, let's see, we got some yam. We've got a kalanchoe. Most of the pigeon peas from the time have died back, but birds have used that one for a nest. Uh, let's see, more guinea grass, the giant Tithonia, the Mexican sunflower. Uh, plantain hasn't changed much. There's a chaya in there. Mexican or Cuban oregano. Got this cranberry hibiscus that I planted before I left. So that survived. Let's see what else we go as we march jungle bound. So we've got an avocado from seed that came up. The sugar cane's looking beautiful. We must not have had too dry of a season. The mulberries going into a dormancy time. Uh, we've got a cocoa plum still there. The compost pile is pretty much all gone, decomposed. Let's see if I move the sugar cane off to the side. 
Got more sugar cane. I got plenty of sugar cane. Could use some of that right now, honestly. Yeah, got a big yucca, a cassava plant. What I don't see, and what might be bad news, is I don't see Chester the Digester. Oh, so here's another cocoa plum. Maybe I'm just not looking. Actually, the cocoa plum was planted that side of the path, so the sugar cane has come down this way of it. Maybe that's Chester way back in there. All right, we gotta bushwhack a little bit because I know I'm off what used to be the trail. So this, okay, so this is significant. This tall tree is a soursop that one of our sponsors, when we first moved to the place, uh, paid for a soursop tree, gave us a little bit of an investment capital, and it was it was right small seedling out of a pot, and now it's. Now it's quite a large tree. We'll have to clean up around that and see if uh, see what we get after that area is cleaned up. Pigeon pea, more pigeon pea. I just see some hints of black back in there. I don't know if that's Chester with no gas in them or if there's issues going on there. That'll be something that I have to get back to you all on. Yeah, I'm gonna have a bit of bushwhacking to clear out these trail, these trails. Um, let's head back and see what behind, behind the house looks like. Because I bet there's a second colony. I hear some more cranberry hibiscus survived. I think we also have a second colony of bees in what used to be our chicken coop. We'll see if that's still the case. Because they like moving into the bee coop now. We've got a thornless dragon fruit that's coming up here. Tied up our scooter. Hopefully that's still in running order. Oh, let's see, we got a mango tree. That one's not gonna be able to live there forever considering it's right next to the house. Let's break some of this. That's not important. Uh, let's see what, what plant is that growing up in there? That's a giant granadilla, so a passion fruit family member that produces Passion fruit's the size of small melons. If I look under here, I should see if honeybees are coming in or going out. Yes, honeybees are coming in and going out. It's kind of dark. You see one up here in the corner. There it comes in one. So I've got another colony living right in there. But I see the top of the beehive way back in there. So that beehive is still there. I don't want to really cross in front of this flyway. Uh, let me go around where Julio is. I hear another colony in there, I'm pretty sure. Oh, the bee, where the beehive, well, I've got the beehive in there. Oh, that beehive is over here? Yeah, oh, yeah. another big Mexican sunflower. All right, now I had, okay, I did, it's still here. So I planted a air potato at the base in here and it is still here, so that did come back this year uh, in the midst of this giant lantana. It also decided to call it home. Got some spider webs I'm working through. More lantana. Got a pallet table, recognize that? Julio? Oh, nice. <laughs> it was honestly my, my cat's jungle gym for the longest time. So the beehive back in here is almost completely overgrown. But it's still standing. Huzzah! We've got passion fruit vines up in the canopy. I think I planted six, eight, maybe even twelve passion fruit vines in this area and they are up in the canopy. I don't see any passion fruits right off, but well, again, this whole area is going to be it's cut, flowering. cleared back. You see a flower? I see some buds over there. In there. Oh, yep, yeah, up in the canopy. Yep. Yeah. So we'll see what we end up getting. I was here, it felt very much more like desserty. Yeah, yeah, it and did. It definitely it's well definitely, nice. I mean, being semi arid, it's definitely usually deserty. Uh, and now, so much vegetation, it's helped it hold more of the moisture and some of the better soil that we've built. So, I'm going to clear out this place uh, a little bit more. I'm going to bushwhack some. I'm going to go up some of the hills and look at the different flats. But then I will get back to you guys, uh, I'll make another clip added onto here. Uh, let's, let's see what I discover.
Oh boy, let's find out what the summary is. Okay, so it's been two days now since I've gotten here, gotten back, settled in a little bit more, and uh, cleared some of the paths around the house. Uh, so where do we stand? How are things going? Um, they're going well. Like almost all the plants survived and everything in the house is intact. I haven't gotten inside the dome yet because it's there's honeybees in there and my bee suit arrives next week. So huzzah, I've got to wait for that. Um, but yeah, almost all the plants survived. Chester's okay. And the trails were like gone. Like I couldn't even get around the dome. That was just in, completely swallowed in by plants and vegetation. Uh, but a lot of that vegetation was like Cuban oregano and herbs and stuff that had grown up. The trees have grown up significantly. The best trees have probably been the soursop and the avocados around here and one mango tree. There's definitely winners. Yams are doing well. I'm finding out who the thrivers and who the survivors are. And that's kind of cool. So, yeah. We'll do future videos on how things progress, but right now I'm I got the water system cleaned up and rainwater system looking good, looking good today. Um and solar panels on the roof, getting electricity going. And uh yeah. Chester will probably be a couple weeks until he's up and running, then I'll have biogas to cook with. Uh once I get into the dome, that's where my solar ovens are, so then I'll have solar and solar cooking to do but right now i've got electric that i'm working with so that's fine but we'll keep you posted as we go on out from here but it's a jungle out here it's exciting and yeah food is you know pr probably makes up a good chunk of the vegetation around here um it's a bummer because like not much stuff's in season right now but it will be it will be shortly uh we've got let me see, flip this around. So there's the dome. Uh, sun's going down, but that big old, past the, some towels hanging up, drying up, that whole big bush tree thing's a giant pigeon pea. And uh, yeah, that trail going back through there, around that grass clump, you know, it was cutting through about half of it was food. Had to cut back some of my dragon fruit. Um, bunch of Cuban oregano. But yeah. Now, things are looking really good. I'm excited. So a lot of work ahead. Keep me busy over the next uh, couple of weeks. But hey, this is how you grow uh, a food forest. And uh, this is how you live in a garden, not grow a garden. So, all right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.